Hi! In this video, you will learn how to create a multi-step online form. I'll explain what is used for and how to set it up on your website. To explore the multi-step form or marketing quiz form, I'll use a travel company website as an example. The website visitor fills in the fields of the quiz and afterwards travel managers can find them a suitable tour. As a rule, the quiz is created to engage the user and ultimately make them share their contact details. On the screen you can see what the configured form looks like. Let's have a look at the steps the form has. I can select what kind of vacation I prefer, how long I plan to stay on vacation, the estimated travel budget, and finally, how many people are traveling. I can also add additional information, for example, give a heads up that trip participants are vegans. The last step of the form consists of the fields for contact details such as name, phone number, and email. That's all done, so I click the Get the Result button and see the success message confirming that the travel company manager will contact me soon to offer the most suitable tour. Now let's go to the website editor and have a look at how to create this form. On Tilda there are two specific blocks that are designed for creating marketing quizzes. You can find these blocks in the form category of the block library. Select either the BF919 block that is displayed right on the page or the BF920 block that is displayed as a pop-up. Let's select the BF919 block. I click on the block to add it to the page and open its content panel. Here I can specify all the content of the form. There are two tabs in the content panel, input fields and other. Let's start with the other tab first and then we'll look into creating and editing fields. In the other tab you can find such fields as description and description for results screen both with preset text as well as success message and success page URL. Titles for the back, next and last question buttons and also the show results button. You can also connect the data capture service to the form so all the collected data will be sent there after the user has completed the form on the website. Let's change the default values to the ones that I've prepared beforehand. In the description field I write, take our travel quiz and find out where to go on vacation next. For the description for results screen field, I type complete the form and we'll get back to you shortly. In the success message field, I'll use the phrase thank you, our manager will contact you within 24 hours. Then in the success page URL field, you can specify the address of the page where the user will be redirected after successfully submitting the form. I won't be filling out this field for my example. The next fields allow editing titles of navigation buttons in the form. I can rename the back button title, the next button title, the last question button title and the show results button title. Let me change the back button title to go back. As for the remaining buttons, I'll leave the default values there. And now let's save the changes and have a look at how they have been applied. You can see that the description of the quiz has changed and so has the back button title. And if I click through the form, I'll see that the description for results screen has changed as well. Let's go back to the content panel of the block and open the input fields tab. In this tab I can create all the fields I want to see in the form. It's important to remember that one field equals one step. Note that there are various fields for different users on tilde, 21 field types to be exact, that slightly different settings, but all field types are sure to contain the input title and the part that the user interacts with, meaning fills out boxes, specifies the values, etc. Besides, there is another field to set, a so-called variable name. The variable name is the system identifier of the field that is not visible to the users. A specific variable name may be required by the connected data capture service. If so, you can enter it here. As you can see, the input field tab contains some demo content already. I can also add new fields by clicking the Add Input Field button and delete the unwanted fields by clicking Delete in the top right corner of the field. Let me delete all the preset fields and create new ones. Quick reminder, I'm creating a form for the travel company website. And the first field I add is 
question with image answers. Here I type in what kind of vacation do you prefer in the input title field. As the answer type, I make sure that the radio button type value is selected so that the user can select just one answer option. I also leave the variable name field empty. And in the image variance field, I upload pictures that I've prepared beforehand. You can upload the images either by adding a link or by uploading them from the desktop. Let's upload files from the computer. Click Upload Files, select the ones you want to use and click Open. The files are being uploaded. Once the selected images appear here, click Upload Selected. As you can see, images differ in size, but that's not a big deal since the 1 to 1 value for the aspect ratio options below is selected by default, so all the pictures will look good on the published website. Then I add relevant captions at the right of the images. City vacation, mountain camping, beach vacation, cruise. In the right top corner of each field, you can see the control elements. Using this, you can drag the fields up and down to rearrange them and also delete, turn off or duplicate the fields. For example, if you turn the field off, it won't be displayed on the published website but will be saved here in the content of the block. The turned off field becomes sort of grayish color and transparent compared to other fields. Let's turn the field down and go to its bottom part. Almost every field contains the required option at the very bottom. If you check this box, the user won't be able to submit the form without filling out the field. And now let's create the next field. I click Add Input field and select Question with Answers type this time. I add the How long is your vacation question as the input title and the answer variants are just one weekend one or two weeks, more than two weeks, more than a month. Note that the answers are separated with line breaks. That is, each answer starts with a new line. The third field is an interactive one. I click Add Input field again and select the Quantity Range Slider field type. I add the What is your vacation budget per person question as the input title, so the user is to drag a slider at this step to specify the comfortable travel budget per traveler. I type in 500 as the minimum value and 5000 as the maximum value, and the step size value is 500. That is, the person can select $500, $1,000, $1,000 and $500, and so on, all the way up to $5,000. Note that I enter the price without specifying the currency. You can set it up separately in the Payment Systems tab in the Site Settings. The fourth field is to clarify how many people are traveling, and to do that, I select the Quantity plus minus Buttons field type. I put the how many people are traveling question in the input title field and then two in the value field. That is, I specify the default value. The value displayed for the user is two, that is two people. And this number can be decreased or increased by clicking the minus and plus buttons each located on either side. And the next step is asking for additional information. To do that, I select the multi-line text field Type additional details as the input title and select 2 for the rows count option. If you ask me, two lines should be enough for a person to write additional info that can be of help in finding them just the right tour. But if you prefer having more lines for this step, this field type provides as many as 10 lines. In the last step, it's a good idea to ask visitors for their contact details, that is their name, phone number and email address. Note that the BF 919 block automatically combines selected contact field types in one step. Let's create these fields. Click Add Input field and select the Name field type. I add your name text as the input placeholder for this field. This text I just added will be displayed in the field until the person clicks on it and starts entering their data. Then I ask for the person's phone number. I can select the so-called mask type for the phone number field, a custom mask or an auto mask with country code. Let's select the auto mask with country code value. 
The system automatically detects the user's geolocation and shows the appropriate mask, according to the phone extensions used in the country where the person appears to be at the moment. The automatically detected country code, for my example, is the US. Users from other countries will get other values. And the last field that I create is the field to enter an email. I also add your email as the input placeholder. Now let me go through all the fields again and decide which of those should be marked as required ones. The first, second, and the fourth field should definitely be filled in by the visitors. The field for additional information is not of that critical importance. And the last step of the form, asking to enter the name, phone, and email should be mandatory as well. That's it! Now all the fields that are checked as required have to be filled in, or the user won't be able to submit the form on the website. You can also delete or change each of the fields you've created. To delete a field, click Delete in the right top corner of the field, and change the type of the field by clicking the drop-down menu. Note that all the data submitted using the form is saved to the lead section of the project. Click on the lead section and you'll see the data submitted on the website. Here you can check whether the form works correctly, fix any errors in submissions using error logs, as well as change the preferred time period for the submissions to be stored here. It can be 30 days, 1 day, or choose not to store option, if for some reasons you'd like your visitors' personal data not to be stored until the servers. Let's go to the content panel again. If I click Connect, under the Connected Services section, I'll get to the Forms tab in the site settings. Here I can connect preferable data collection services from those integrated with Tilde. Now let's get back to editing the form. I save the changes real quick. Then I publish the page to see the fields that I've just created for the form. The first field is what kind of vacation do you prefer? And the variants here are city vacation, mountain camping, beach vacation, and cruise. I select the relevant answer and continue. The next one is how long is your vacation? You can see that if I don't pick any option and try to click next, the system won't let me do that as I've checked this tab as a required one. Let's select more than two weeks, for example, and click Next. Then I specify the travel budget per person and how many people are traveling. Suppose that there are three travelers. In the Next field, I can provide additional information, but it's not a mandatory field, so I can just proceed to the last question. Here I type in my contact info and click Get the result. The form has been successfully submitted and all the data can now be found in the lead section as I've shown you before. Now let's have a look at the BF919 block settings. To do that, I go back to the editor and click settings at the top left corner of the block. The form name is the first input field here. This field comes in handy when there are several forms on the website and you want to know where exactly the entries are coming from. Once you name the form, all the collected lead data will be marked with this particular name. Next are the main settings of the form that allow changing the block width and the block position offset. And now let's save the changes and have a look at how they have been applied. The next tab is called Form Input Style. Here I can adjust the color of the text in the input fields, add background color, as well as change border color, width, and radius. In the Buttons tab, I can change the color of the navigation buttons in the form. By clicking Show More Settings, I can adjust the color on Hover, as well as the button text style, size, etc. In the Card Style tab, I can adjust how the background of the form and other elements of each tab of the form should be displayed. The Typography tab allows adjusting all the text values of the form. I can change the font size, the title color, select the font weight for the form titles, change the description color, and so on. In the Animation tab, I can choose the animation effect for when the form appears on the page. Let's select Fade and Up value and the button effect, for example, Flash. I save the changes and look at the results so far. Let's click Publish, open the page, and now I can see that the form appears from below and the flash effect has been applied to the button. Let's go back to the block settings. These two fields allow adjusting the success message text color as well as its background color. 
Here I can also select the top padding and bottom padding values. And in the last field I can specify the block background color. Let's set it to the light gray color for example. Click save and close. And see that the form background color has changed. All done! This is how you can add and set up a marketing quiz on your website using the block BF919. And now let's have a look at the other options to create a quiz using any vertical block with multiple inputs. Click the plus icon at the bottom part of the screen to add a new block, then go to the Form tab and select any vertical block with multiple input fields. For example, the bf 204 n block. I add the block to the page. Note that you need to select a vertical block specifically, that is, its field should be located one below the other. And now all I have to do is to go to the content panel of the block, add a new field in the input fields tab, and select the break in steps field type. Then I need to move this newly added field exactly where I want the form to break into the next step. Using the up and down control elements, place it where you see it fits best. I move it two fields up. Then I save the changes and see what it looks like. And you can see that the form with multiple input fields has transformed into the step-by-step -step form or quiz where visitors are asked to provide their name and email address in the first step and give the phone number as well as write additional comments in the next step. After that they can submit the form. All the other options in the content and settings panels of the block are the same as for the BF919 block, so there is no use to look through those again. You can find detailed guides on connecting data capture services to the form as well as creating a step-by-step -step form until the help center. All our guides contain screenshots and GIF images, so all you have to do is to repeat the action step-by-step -step and you'll easily figure out whatever feature you are setting up. Thanks for watching and good luck with creating wonderful websites! Bye!